Okay, hey guys, this is Emily here with 3D Printing Canada, and today I'm going to show you a few kalimbas I've designed. Okay, so I decided to try and design a kalimba based on my ukulele that I 3D printed previously. I thought that turned out really well and I thought the same principles would apply with the kalimba because it's a wooden an instrument that is usually wooden that you can make out of plastic because it's a simple resonator box style instrument. So a kalimba is also known as a thumb piano or an imbira and it's an instrument that originally came from Africa but I've also seen it made in wood and made out of coconuts, usually just metal tines on top anything that'll make a good resonator box sound, so I decided to see if I could do the same in plastic. And I ended up designing all three of these in Tinkercad. So the first one I made was this kalimba here, and I'll show you a little bit of my process. So I'm starting fresh with the new design in Tinkercad, and first thing I'm going to do is add a box. And this will be the basis for my first kalimba resonator box. So I'm going to resize it to dimensions that I figured out ahead of time. And looking at the shape I've created, this is the this is the general shape of what I'm going for. But right now it's a pretty pointy looking box, so I've learned that one thing I can change in Tinkercad is the radius of a cube, which just helps to round the edges a bit. So, you know, if you're making something handheld, it'll be a lot more comfortable. So you can turn the radius all the way up to make it a sphere, essentially. But for my purposes, I'm only going to turn up the radius a little bit. It's just enough to be comfortable to hold. Okay, so I've got my general shape here. And next thing I'm going to do is I want there to be a hole in this box. Same as with a ukulele or a guitar, there needs to be a hole to let the sound out when you're making a resonator box style of instrument. So I chose to make the diameter 31.75 for mine personally. And this will be the size of my kalimba's hole. So right now the box, as I have it in my scene, is a solid object. So I want to make it hollow. And I'll show you how to do that in Tinkercad. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting my box I'm clicking the duplicate and repeat button, or you can press the keyboard shortcut control D. I'm changing it to a hole because ultimately I'm going to use it to hollow out my initial box. Now what I want to do here is change the size of the box such that when I line everything up, the wall width for my first box will be four millimeters all around. And then once I have my shapes the sizes I want them, I can select everything, select everything that I would like to align, click the align button in Tinkercad, and then here I am choosing the axis on which I want everything aligned. So I aligned it on X and Y.
and just to make sure everything's where I want it to be, I'm going to select this outer box, lift it up to see what's underneath, because I don't want my hollow shape of a box to be right against the ground or else it would be a hole on the bottom. So I would like to raise that up by about four millimeters. In my case. So I'm changing the snap grid so I can move in increments of 0.1 millimeter because I would like to move this up by 0.4. Wait, is that right? No, I want it to be up by four entire millimeters, not by 0.4, sorry about that. It's been a learning experience. Okay, so now that I have the whole shape four millimeters off the ground, I'm all right with putting my initial box shape zero millimeters off the ground, such that, oh, I thought everything was going to be lined up well, but I believe the problem is I only subtracted the height by four millimeters when I should have subtracted it by eight millimeters because there's four millimeters coming off of each side. And as you can see, I ended up with an open face because of that mistake. But luckily, you can always undo in Tinkercad. Okay, now I have to move my initial box out of the way again, so I'm able to edit the shape that's a hole. So I'm just going to move that up on the z-axis, so here's where I'm changing the shape of the box. I think I have the right shape selected at this point, but sometimes it can be a little hard to tell in Tinkercad. So once I have entered that, I can see that the hole is no longer interfering with the interface of the box. So, I have successfully hollowed out my shape at this point by resizing the inner, by duplicating the shape and resizing it to a little smaller, turning it into a hole, then aligning everything. It'll be like hollowing it. And some 3D modeling programs have a button where you can just click hollow and it makes it a little easier than the steps you have to take here in Tinkercad, but Tinkercad has its other advantages, so I like using it. And now that I've combined the shapes, I combine the box with the hole. Here I'm viewing it on hole mode, so you can see that you can see the inside as well as the outside. It's like seeing it on x-ray mode, but I changed it back to solid. And now that I have this hollow box, I'm able to place the hole for where it needs to go, the sound hole. So I'm aligning it on the Z and the Y axis once it loads for me. So now it's time to combine the cylinder hole with the box object such that the Kalimbo will have a sound hole for that sound to escape. So I've dragged it over. I'm selecting everything and I'm clicking the align button and that's the axis I want to align it on, both X and Y. And at this point we have our general box shape. So one of my goals with making this kalimba was I was hoping to print it support free without any extra support material. And to accomplish this with a box style, I'm going to need to add physical supports to the structure so that it's able to do that.
because as it is, uh, most 3D printers aren't able to bridge straight across. So I'm going to turn my object 90 degrees because this is the orientation I plan on printing it in. Just reposition it so it's sitting on this build area here in Tinkercad. So my idea for creating a self-supported object, being one that wouldn't require any additional supports while 3D printing, were to add triangular shapes to the structure of the kalimba, such that it would print so the hollow area of the kalimba is somewhat house-shaped, like a five-sided shape, point at the top. And that way it could 3D print without supports, was my theory. So Tinkercad lets you be creative and eyeball your creations if you like, so that's essentially what I'm doing here. Yes, a sharp angle like that would definitely print fine support free. I'm going to make sure everything's aligned here. Oh yeah, that is the same width. I'm changing the dimension of this wedge so that, uh, what you call it, width-wise, it's half as long as the kalimba. So with my thought being that once there's two, it'll cover the top area. So I'm duplicating this shape and I'm mirroring it. Uh, that's where I can choose the axis. Okay, just to get a better look at everything. I'm going to try that again outside the kalimba. Mirroring my object, then lining it up. Moving my wedge shape over into my kalimba box shape, I see and aligning it here. I see that I don't quite have it lined up. So I press the undo button. What I need to do here is group the shape. Then once it's down to two shapes, it's much easier to align two than it is three. So I've got everything selected. I'm clicking the align button. And I want it aligned on that axis and this axis. But still, looks like my dimensions are a bit off because I don't want it poking out the sides of the box here, so quick way to fix this is just adjusting these dimensions once I get everything lined up where I'd like it to be. Okay, I'm selecting everything again, and I'm going to try to align it all. See how it looks now. Now that I've resized my wedge shape a little bit. Shape made of wedges, that is. And changing my box to hollow, I can get a sneak peek. That's generally the structure I like, but I don't want any gaps at the top, so I will adjust the kalimba box such that nothing's poking out, hopefully. It's 
changing the snap grid in the bottom right corner there is a great way to have even more precise control over the shapes you're playing with in Tinkercad. Whether you're playing with them or modeling them with intention, there's a lot of impressive things that can be done with this browser-based software. And I see that there's just a little bit of space to fill in, so I'm just moving it up bit by bit until I have everything lined up where it needs to be. A bit of trial and error never hurt anyone. Structurally, this is what I had in mind for a resonator box. You know, it's a simple design, but I believe it'll be functional. As a last step, I'm going to group all my shapes together so that everything is one solid object as far as Tinkercad is concerned. Just confirming, you can click hole to double check. And here's what we got. Now let's export it as an STL, get it into Cura, slice it all up, and get printing. And today we're going to start with the cylinder for our kitty's face. I know I want it to be about 30 millimeters high in the end, so I'm going to start with that and make my adjustments accordingly. Uh, let's see, maybe about doo -doo -doo, 130 by 130. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut F to focus in on my model. That's my favorite shortcut. Okay, so we've got a round cylinder so far. Well, it's fairly round. Uh, the edges are a little bit blocky, so I'm going to increase the sides here to fix that. And also, since this is going to be a handheld object, I want the sides, the corners to be a bit smoother. So I can turn up both the bevel and the segments to kind of smooth out the edges here. Okay, that's a good start here. And uh, let's see, I do want it a bit longer than I do tall, I think. So I'm just going to make a little adjustment like that. Okay. We've got our base model, and now we want to give our kitty some ears. I'm going to use boxes instead of triangles or roofs, which you might think cat ears are triangles, why wouldn't you use that? But I like to use these boxes because I can, same with the cylinder, I can smooth out the edges a bit by increasing the radius. So I think I only want to increase it by like one just to soften the edges a little bit and it's at 10 steps which is good because it gets looking a little blocky if you have it turned down any less than that okay so yeah now let's attach it to this kitty cat I'm going to center it on the top view here. Okay, we don't need that selected. We're working on this guy right now. I'm going to rotate him a bit. Just click and drag. Do, do, do. Uh, give him a good 22 and a half degree spin. Okay, and now I want to make it fit in like kitty ears. Oh, I will have to adjust the size of these ears afterwards like the height and everything just to make it fit in a bit better but this is a good starting point just to 
get the shape down there, make it all fit in together. I want to make this 30 millimeters high, just like the cylinder. Okay, and I notice there's a difference in, hmm, let's see, let's see. Uh, to compensate for this difference in the end, I think I am going to have to do a, I am going to have to split it up, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, I'm going to select everything and press F to get a good view on it all, nice and centered. Oops. Click away to unselect, and now we're just working on these ears a little more. I want to duplicate it and mirror image it so it's exactly like this. And then I would like to do, 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 I guess I have to click away for a second, but I want it to fit on this side and look like a matching ear, which is about there, I would say. Okay. Uh, why is the shape so different? Okay, now that we've got our two ears here, I'm going to click one and then hold the shift key and click another so both are selected. And I just want them to be not so low to the ground. I want them to line up a bit better here. And you know, I'm going to turn the snap grid down so I have more options to work with here down to as low as it goes to 0.1 millimeter just so I can get it exactly where I want it. Well hell we ended up okay. Okay, I was just checking a thing. Okay, so we have the start of our kitty shape here. Uh, it looks a little funny with the red and the orange overlapping, so I'm just going to make everything the same color, actually. Make it a purple cat. Mm, now that I've done that, you can really notice that these two ears are kind of higher than you would expect them to be, so I'm going to lower them both by going back here, zoom out a little, hold down shift to select both of them. Oh, it does look like they're already selected. And just sink them in until it looks like they're not poking up anymore. And it's alright if they're not directly in line, because it doesn't have to be perfect. Just having fun with it, really. Just going to adjust these ears to make them look a little more perfect for me. millimeters out. And hey, we've got the start of our shape here. I'm going to click to snap the view to the left, to the left, to the left. Um, so if this is set to zero, it looks like it's too low. I'm going to undo that. Please ignore that. And what we're left with here is something relatively cat-shaped. 
The next goal I have is to make my kalimba hollow, the main body of it at least. And to do that, I'm just going to select the cylinder object. I'm going to duplicate it. And by default, when you duplicate in Tinkercad, it places the object back where the original object is, so you have to move it out of the way to see what you're working with. In this case, I just move mine higher. I'm going to snap to top view, change it to a hole because we're trying to we're going to subtract this hole from the original object to make it hollow because Tinkercad doesn't really have any easier hollow feature than that. And I know I want the walls of my Kalimba resonator box to be about four millimeters thick, so what makes sense to me is decreasing each side by four millimeters. I'm looking at the number on the side and just counting down by four. On each side, now this is 120, so we'll take it down to 116 and 112. Okay, so that's those dimensions, and we gotta remember we're working in 3D, so we gotta adjust this one as well. I'm going to make it, I'm going to subtract by 8, so it's 4 millimeters on each side, down to 22. And then to make this a hollow object, I'm going to lower it back into the original object. I'm looking at how far away it is from the surface. I'm looking at this number here until it's at four millimeters. So I know it should be about four millimeters all around when I select everything on the screen and group it. I should have a hollow object now. And the way you can check if this worked or not, I mean it should work, but the way you can confirm that your object is hollow is you can click hole and you can see that there's an inner chamber there when you look at it in that view. So that's exactly what I want. Okay. What's left to do is I want to give it a little hole, you know, so the sound comes out. and. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use a cylinder for this one. I think I'd like something a bit more kitty nose shaped because this is this is the fun one. This is the cute one. Okay, I'm going to choose the roof to give it a bit of a triangular nose. This will need a bit of supports to print with, but I think it'll I think it'll be worth it because it'll it'll be pretty cute. I'm going to turn that 90 degrees, typing in 90 on my keyboard. Okay, and we will want this to be a hole and not a solid object for our purposes. And I know with kalimbas it doesn't really matter what, what shape the sound hole is as long as there's somewhere for the sound to exit. So oh, I figured we'd have a little fun with this one. I'm going to scale it up, drag it over to my kitty face, and okay, I'm going to center the object here because, or align is the, is the word that Tinkercad uses. So I click align over here, or you can use L as a shortcut on your keyboard. And then I want to align it on this axis, so make sure it's nice and centered there. But yeah, that's looking like a kitty cat to me. Oops. Oh, oh, I do this sometimes. I forget that I need to lower things down. Let's just lower that right down. It still should be nice and centered. And we don't want it to go all the way down. We just want it to like pierce the top layer, really. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm going to select everything and group it all together. Okay, and now I think we've got something good to work with here. And we can start... Or maybe we're not quite done yet. You know what? I'm gonna give this kitty some whiskers too. Just make it extra cute. And for that... I guess I will just stretch out a sphere. Make some long thin lines is what I'm going for here. 
How about five millimeters? I'm going to press F on my keyboard to focus in on that so it's not so tiny. I can click here and type in the number five millimeters. Okay, I actually want it a bit thinner than that, maybe three millimeters thick. And do, 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 do. How about 35 millimeters long? Okay, I'm gonna call that a whisker. I'm gonna change it to a hole and okay. I'm gonna click away and then press F on my keyboard just to center everything back. Click on top to center the view. Okay, and I want to make sure this is off the bed so I can <laughs> use it to make some whiskers. Use the buttons on my keyboard just to move it over, just the arrow keys. Okay. Now, that's the idea, but I'd rather have it at an angle here. Mm, let's see. Give it a good 20 degrees for the first one. 21, whatever. Oops, I undid the whole thing. Let me try that again. Okay, I'm going to type in 20 degrees. I'm going to snap to my top view. Um, you know, it's kind of harder to see that nose there now that I've grouped it. So I'm just going to ungroup it just so everything's easier, a bit easier to look at. I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to place this where I want it. That's the first one there. <clears throat> okay, I like that shape for a whisker, so I'm just going to duplicate that same object and use it a few times. Actually, after I duplicate the object, I'm going to mirror it. You can press M on your keyboard or you can click this button up here. And I want to mirror it on this axis. Okay, so now that's what I want. And I just want this to be the lower whisker. I'm uh, getting a little close to the edge there, but I think we should be all right. Yeah, I think this will be fine. So we got these, oops. We got these two whiskers and, oh, I think I'll just add a third whisker in between. And to do that, I'm going to press F on my keyboard to focus on N. Um, and I'm going to duplicate it. Rotate the new one so it's back, more like being straight. Mm. Oh, I want this one to be a short stubby one. 20 millimeters by 2 millimeters. That sounds good to me. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, just zooming out to have an overall look at everything. I think I'm just going to select these three whiskers. This whisker is what I'm trying to select. And I'm going to hold my shift key and also select these two guys as well. And just from looking at the top view, I just want to move these over a bit, so I'm just pressing the arrow keys on my keyboard. A bit further from the edge, and I'll just move this little guy a bit further out too, so there's more wall space in between the whiskers, so hopefully a bit more structurally, structurally sound. <laughs> Okay, I like these whiskers for this side, so I'm going to duplicate and mirror them and copy it on the other side. So to do that, I'm selecting all three, hold down shift and click. I'm clicking the duplicate button. Okay, it's duplicated. Now I'm clicking the mirror button to flip it around on this axis. And now... I use the arrow keys on my keyboard to match it over here. Just 
get this all top aligned. I'll switch it to, oh, that was on flat view. Okay. Back to perspective view, and flat view. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's see what happens. I'm going to select everything in the scene and group it all together. Control G or click group up here. You know, now that I've done that, I feel like the nose should be just a little bit higher. Or maybe the whiskers a little bit lower. No, no, I'm gonna undo that. Because I'm very indecisive, but okay. I just want to move this up a little bit. So just a few presses on the arrow keys. And there, I like the look of that. I'm going to select everything in the scene, group it all together, It takes a second to group. And there's our grouped object. It's looking good. It's looking good. And now, last but not least, we're going to export this out of Tinkercad and get it into our slicer to get ready for 3D printing. I'm going to save it as an SDL. Okay, now we're to the point where we have both of the kalimbas ready to assemble. I'm going to start with this color changing one here. So I bought this kalimba replacement kit off of Amazon. It has 17 notes, which is most common. So that's what that kit looks like. Okay, and the way this is all going to go together is we have two pieces of wood. This one goes on the bottom. The smooth one goes on the top. The one with the divot goes on the bottom. This part we're going to screw into the plastic. Okay, so we want the wood bar to be right up against the edge. So the goal is to have this centered. I'm going to I'm going to pre-drill a few holes to put the screws in. And yeah, then we'll put it all together. Let's get started. So I've I've borrowed my dad's Mastercraft drill for this job, and a tiny bit. I haven't really done much drilling before, so I did a bit of practice on my failed print at first, you know, just did a few holes there. And yeah, I'm happy with how those turned out, so I think I'm ready to go ahead with this. So once this is all put together, this bar will be on top, super glued in place. And this will be immediately underneath. But first, before we get into all that, I want to make dots for where I'm going to pre-drill the holes. So this will go at the top, centered. This will go right underneath. I'm just going to look at that like this. Make sure it's parallel. And make sure there's about equal distance on either side. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm gonna make little dots where I wanna screw the holes. That's where I'm gonna start. Okay. Just as reference for where it's going to go. centered. Well, that seems to be centered to me, so I'm going to start making dots. Okay. So we have our holes we're going to pre-drill. Okay, so I'm going to hold the kalimba steady in one hand, take my drill in the other hand, and I'm just going to go very quickly up and down at full speed. 
Uh, let me just rearrange this a little. Okay, that's better. Okay. So I start with the drill resting in the center of where I want to drill and... Okay, straight up and down, then I'm going to pull it up full speed. Okay, there's my first hole. That worked out well. And there's that one, nice and lined up. Okay, and yeah, I was pretty off the mark with that one, so too bad I made such a big dot, but oh well. So about the centers of the holes, I'm trying to line up here. Yeah, this one will be more like down here, I think. Okay, ready to go. Okay. I don't think I was quite straight up and down for that one, so I'm just going to re-drill that again. Just make sure. Yep, it didn't take much, but okay, now we got our holes. <laughs> and now we've heated up the kalimba too, to show off that temperature changing effect. So I'm at the step where I'm screwing in my pre-drilled holes. That's a pretty cool effect. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try again with my handy pink screwdriver. Because I was struggling a bit with the tiny screwdriver. Um, I feel like this one might be just a little more capable. We'll find out. Maybe I need the bigger size. Uh, it's a select a size. Get this more or less lined up, hold it down, and we just start screwing. I do hear it cracking a little bit. I hope that's not the plastic splitting, but I'm just not screwing it too tight, you know? Just, I won't screw it all the way in yet until we get other screws in there to make sure this has a bit of movement still, but okay, one screw down, four to go. Okay, we've got it, we've done it. Okay, now I don't wanna over tighten the screws, but I do want them to be just about as tight as they can go without without resistance and without the plastic cracking. Okay. Okay, that looks good. That one almost started to strip a bit, so that one's in there for good. This is nice and tight. Nice. Okay. And we've got our bit screwed in place. Nice. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the kitty kalimba. Then I'll go to putting the rest together and putting on the tines. Here's that one so far. It's a nice temperature effect. You can really see when my hands are so warm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really cool effect. I like this filament a lot. 
Okay, now I'm going to take a closer look at my kitty kalimba here in the magic purple cicada filament. So it's a bit less straightforward of where I'm going to put the hardware because it's not box shaped and easy as the other one, but I was thinking the top wood bar would go along the edge here. This would go here, then all the tines, etc. and go down like this over the face. And yeah, then the bottom bar just goes above the nose and yeah, I think this is going to look alright. Okay, but first I need to pre-drill the holes to screw this metal bit in place. So same as the other one, first I'm going to line it up and do a few dots. Okay, that's going to go across the widest point of the ears. This one's going to go just underneath the ears. Okay. It might be. Oops! <clears throat> Excuse the loud noise. There might be a tiny bit of metal hanging off the side, but I don't think that'll affect the sound or the look of it, so. Oh, I think it's gonna be good. Okay. I'm gonna draw my dots. Nice and centered, parallel, kind of look at the layer lines if you hold it in the light the right way, make sure it lines up like that. Anyways, the first circle is here, and from there we can line up the rest. Make sure it's about centered, if I look at it like that, yeah, that looks pretty fairly centered to me. I got my five dots. One, two, three, four, five. Now I got these holes I'm going to pre-drill. Window light on one side, LED on the other. There's one. Okay. Now we got another set of kalimba bits made in China, bought off of Amazon. I want to get the screws out of it for starters. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And first things first, we're going to screw the metal hardware in place. all screwed in so I'm just going to screw everything else down nice and tight but not over tightened just to the point where I start to feel a little bit of resistance okay next step is assembly continuing continuing the assembly so the way to assemble it is to put this up top, I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to put it in place. a little too much glue so I'm going to grab something to wipe off the excess. Ooh yeah that's way too much. My mistake. Comparing it to my first draft here. I do like how this one sounds. So the next piece to go down is this piece. Okay. Same on either side, but this side looks a bit nicer. Uh, this time I'm going to use a lot less super glue. Clear Gorilla Glue. Yeah. Okay. This time I'm going to put a 
very small amount of super glue down. Now I want it to line up about the same as this one. I made a couple of revisions to this this model, but I still like where everything is placed, so I'm just going to go with the layer lines and try to put this about in place. So that it lines up about right. It doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, you're going to have a nice sounding instrument either way. But I do want it to look nice. Because this is for a friend. I'm going to do the same thing over here to this kitty kalimba. Bring out the rest of this kalimba kit. So it'll be the same thing over here, wood bar goes on top. So for this one, I'm thinking it'll go right above the nose. The kitty nose here. Oops, I'll just compare it with the other one to see how it lines up. And yeah, that lines up about where I would expect. Okay, fast forward to the next morning and all of our super glue is nice and dry and in place now both of our kalimbas here. Nice and secure. So the next step is to add the kalimba tines. So I'm going to start with this green one here, this color changing one. Oops, my hands aren't as warm today. So, so I've got all these kalimba tines and I'm going to show you how to put it all together. This is the order from left to right all the tines are supposed to be in, so I'm going to start again. So this round metal bar stays here, and all of the kalimba tines will hold it in place. Starting with my highest note over here, I'm just giving it a bit of a pre-bend to kind of encourage it that way. Then I stick it into the foremost hole here. And my next step is to just gently encourage it into place, like this. And so once it's in place, it'll be over top of the wood, not digging into it at all, so... Okay, we got our first note in. It doesn't sound like anything so far, but that's okay. We'll keep going, we'll tune it after, and we'll see what happens. It's fine. We got a kalimba! Yay! Obviously it's not a tuned kalimba yet, but that's our next step. Okay, one kalimba down, one kalimba to go. So I've got my second set of kalimba tines here. I'll just empty out and same procedure as the first one. We'll just get all our tines installed and see what it looks and sounds like. Got a kitty kalimba. Uh, the main issue with this kalimba is I was a bit off on my measurements. So ideally you'll have walls that are four millimeters thick when you're making a kalimba, but mine came out a little thicker. And another problem I had was I screwed directly into the plastic instead of pre-drilling my holes. And I found that pre-drilling holes is a lot better or else you end up with cracks in your plastic like I got here. So on my Second rendition, I made a few little changes and I pre-drilled holes and there are no cracks in it. So it turned out a lot nicer, I would say. The problem I have with this kalimba is I ended up placing the two wooden parts a bit too far apart, which at the time I thought it's no problem, it'll sound good either way, but turns out it didn't. And some of the higher notes don't sound on this one. But I still have the lowest octave that makes sound, so 
it wasn't a complete failure. <laughs> this was my last one that I made and I think it turned out the best of the three of them and I don't think I really have any complaints about it. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> I should probably also mention that this kalimba replacement kit that I attached as the hardware, uh, it's pretty inexpensive online and all in all the cost of making a kalimba and adding your own kalimba kit is less than you would pay for if you were buying one, so it's a more affordable option for making instruments. So that's it for this video, but if there's something you'd like to see me design and print, please let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more videos from 3D Printing Canada.